My total knowledge of Nicki Minaj is right around zero in that range. So, you know, I, I have no idea what Nicki Minaj thinks of anything else. But I, I know when someone's not intimidated, and this woman's not intimidated, and the MSNBC lady is like, uh, shut up and know your place, please. I went to Harvard. I think you worked at Red Lobster. And Nicki Minaj was like, what? <laughs> and went completely crazy on her. And it's just so interesting and hard to, to, see, to see someone who's not afraid in America. She really did grow up in Queens, unlike Sandy Cortez. She did not major in international relations at BU. She didn't even go to college. At 19, she was working at Red Lobster. So the question is, as one working class woman of color to another, is Sandy Cortez supporting Nicki Minaj? Of course she isn't. She's not on the side of people who worked at Red Lobster and actually grew up in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care if Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's testicles are enlarged and his fiance left. She has more important people to impress, and last night she did. Well, if you've been awake at any point over the past 24 hours, you've probably seen the picture of Sandy Cortez showing up at a $30,000 a head gala in New York wearing a dress that says tax the rich across the back. So Cortez claims she wore the outfit to start a conversation about what it means to be a, quote, working class woman of color and not at all she would stare at a picture of her butt. That's her view. Have you seen the back? No. We have a message. May I? Oh my God, tax the rich. What a model. When Aurora and I were first kind of partnered, uh, we really started having a conversation about what it means to be working class women of color at the Met. and. You know, while the Met is known for its, its spectacle, we should have a conversation about it. <laughs> she's so dumb and so annoying, but also kind of clever. And she's baiting us here, obviously, and is tempting to rise to the debate. Working class? Right. Sandy Cortez grew up in an affluent suburb very far from the Bronx. Her dad ran an architectural firm. She went to BU. Like so many vapid rich girls, her primary interests are wearing trendy clothes and talking about herself. Working class? Please. Sandy Cortez is a paid defender of entrenched power. We could go on and on and on. On the other hand, if we did go on, we'd merely be feeding her narcissism. So tonight we're going to pass. That's it. No more Sandy Cortez talk. Instead, we're going to focus on the story of another female pop star who has suddenly joined our national political debate, and that would be rapper Nicki Minaj. She entered the conversation abruptly with this tweet yesterday, quote, my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent, she wrote. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. Now, two things about that tweet. Last night we read it, we put the graphic on the screen and we suggested that Nicki Minaj's cousin is the one with the swollen testicles in Trinidad. And we were wrong and we want to admit it. We henceforth correct the record. Nicki Minaj's cousin's testicles are not swollen. As far as we know, he's fine. It's Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's testicles who are swollen from taking the vax. That's the claim. But it's not anything to do with the physical effect of the vaccine that makes our political class mad. It's the last part of Nicki Minaj's tweet that enrages them. The part where she says you should prey on it make the decision yourself like a free human being and quote, don't be bullied. So our media and public health officials didn't like this because they make their livings bullying people. So they couldn't let it stand. So the crazed race lady over at MSNBC told Nicki Minaj to shut up immediately. And people like Nicki Minaj, I have to say this, you have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers, okay? I have 2 million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter. For you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives, my God, sister, you could do better than that. For you to use your platform to put people in the position of dying from a disease they don't have to die from, oh my God, as a fan, as a hip hop fan, as somebody who is your fan, I'm so sad that you did that. So sad that you did that, sister. Oh my God. You gotta love that. <laughs> Lady from Denver who went to Harvard, fake urban accent, she sounds like Obama's sister. But the most amusing part is that woman's position on vaccines, which is how to put it, changed a little bit from a year ago. Watch. 
we just don't know it, uh, how effective or what the adverse events will be. Yeah. We'll have a better idea in December. Every vaccine takes 15, 20 years. Um, so for us yeah. to just wrap yeah. this through less than a year, um, I, I'm not I'm not surprised by the public's skepticism, to be honest, Joy. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're wise. It's, it's wise skepticism. <laughs> they're wise to be skeptical. Don't take the vax. It'll swell your testicles and your fiance will leave you. That's what she was saying last year. In September of last year, she tweeted this, quote, who on God's earth would trust a vaccine approved by the FDA? She put that on Twitter. It's still there. And Nicki Minaj, she's a rapper and everything, but she's not stupid. And she noticed. So she sent out a remarkable tweet against that MSNBC host, which unfortunately was so accurate we cannot read it on the air because it's too over the top, but it's hilarious. But there's something much deeper going on underneath all of this. The Democratic Party's most vivid nightmare is that they won't be able to control their own voters, that some rapper will use their talking points from a year ago, that some celebrity will tell black people the vaccine actually makes you impotent. And now it's happened, and it's actually a problem for them. Because Nicki Minaj's audience doesn't watch Fox. They're not diesel mechanics in rural Georgia. They're the Democratic Party's base. They don't care what NBC News thinks or CNN. They believe Nicki Minaj. Now, they have someone speaking for them. And it's Nicki Minaj. And by the way, she's an actual working class woman of color. She really did grow up in Queens, unlike Sandy Cortez. She did not major in international relations at BU. She didn't even go to college. At 19, she was working at Red Lobster. So the question is, as one working class woman of color to another, is Sandy Cortez supporting Nicki Minaj? Of course she isn't. She's not on the side of people who worked at Red Lobster and actually grew up in Queens. <laughs> She doesn't care if Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's testicles are enlarged and his fiance left. She has more important people to impress. And last night she did. Oh my God, tax the rich. What a model. When at the end of the day, what they actually think the Democrats is that these people are stupid. They like to come around right. every four years for the votes. But at the end of the day, they think Nicki Minaj and all rappers are very stupid. And Nicki Minaj right now is proving them otherwise. She's not afraid. No, she's definitely not afraid. She's a savage, actually. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter. I don't even want to get on Twitter. It was just so... Before funny. we get to the next segment, we haven't been able to figure out whether this show is broadcast in Trinidad. But if Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend is watching, or his former fiancé is watching, we want to hear your story. 